presentation by Dr. Sandeep Basin. He is practicing at Delhi. Hello. Thank you. Hi. Is this working? Is this mic working? So, uh, good evening everyone. I am Dr. Sandeep, I am from Delhi, and um, basically uh, I am into cosmetic surgeries and uh, management, but I do use ozone in my practice wherever possible. So today I'll be uh, telling you how I'm combining the use of ozone for the management of vitiligo. And uh, you know, it's uh, autoimmune disease, also called leukoderma, and a very, very, very difficult disease to cure and very difficult to even recover from this if you're not treating it properly. So I'm managing these vitiligo patients with the medications. Mostly I'm allopathic, so I use allopathic medications, but I try to use a holistic approach, an integrated approach. And also I'm using uh, surgery in um, stable vitiligo cases where we use a surgery called melanocyte transplantation. So small presentation, I show you what is melanocyte transplantation and how I'm combining the use of ozone in the management of vitiligo. And I'll also try to share my protocol, what I am using in the management of uh, vitiligo, what kind of things I'm doing for the management of uh, uh, vitiligo patients, non-surgically as well as surgically, um, we'll try to show if possible. So. Vitiligo, you know, is a very common disease and you can easily, all of you can diagnose it by now. Everybody who's sitting here, I hope, can diagnose Vitiligo. You don't need any complex or complicated uh, investigations to do so. So any white macular patches which are not, neither having itching or irritation, painless, slowly progressing or progressing fast with margins which are not very well defined is something what we can called as with hypopigmented patches called vitiligo. Sometimes we can get with some other conditions like fungal infections or some other condition. But mostly these do not have any scales, they don't have any itching, and they, they are non-irritating, there is no redness. These are the common things. It's a pigmented disorder, disorder of the skin. There's a depigmentation of the skin. And vitiligo causes a lot of, lot of, you know, psychological stress to the patients. It is an autoimmune disease. As you know, by now, most of these diseases are autoimmune diseases. And <laughs> mostly the patients have white spots. They can start from anywhere, start from peripheries like fingers and knuckles. They can go to the center like trunk, abdomen. They are small macular patches. Their borders are usually not well defined and they can have all type of shapes. So there are many various factors, you know, which can contribute to formation of this vitiligo. Still, we don't know exactly what is the cause of this vitiligo, what is causing vitiligo. But what we know, what we know, it is an autoimmune disease. There is some problem in the immune system or there can be some genetic mutations because it is genetically in inherited. So somebody having parents or family members having vitiligo, the chances of vitiligo become much higher. There can be some viral infections that can cause vitiligo. I have been seeing a lot of patients who either had corona or who got vaccinated for the corona, following which their vitiligo developed. A lot of cases are coming to us with this. So it has very strong immune effect and the, the different types of vitiligo, acrofacial, that means coming more on the lips, on the fingertips, on the periphery, more on the mucosa like in the lips or genitalia, generalized all over, mixed, rare varieties. But clinically what is important for us is we try to see is are the white patches increasing or not increasing, are they stable 
or they are unstable. What I mean by stable? By stable, there are three things. One is the white patches are not increasing in size or numbers. Number second, if there is any injury, the injury heals normally with normal color uh, pigmentation. It does. It is not hyperpigmented, and uh, no, no new patches coming. When all these criteria are met, especially for more than one year, we call it a stable vitiligo. Now, why it is important to differentiate between a stable and unstable? Because a stable vitiligo we can treat surgically. Whereas unstable vitiligo we can never take for any surgery because if you take a graft or anything, that will also become hyperpigmented. So one another thing is the vitiligo which is seen in the peripheries, we call it acral vitiligo or acrofacial vitiligo, in the lips, fingertips. Now these vitiligo are very difficult to treat, their results are very difficult even with the best treatments we give them. So they are more difficult to get results. So you must keep all these things in mind, whether the vitiligo is generalized, is it acral, it is stable or unstable. If it is unstable, then the patient is not for surgery, so to manage it with your medical management. Again, we talked the symptoms, patchy loss of the skin color, premature whitening or graying of hair, can be there, which we call leukotrichia, loss of color in the tissues, and vitiligo can start at any age, but usually happens before 30. We do get children also having with tip, uh, vitiligo. Now, classically, what are the things that we use in our allopathic practice is topical and oral steroids, topical catheterine inhibitor, that is tacrolimus, that's quite commonly used. Vitamin D analogs topically are used. Now, this is something very strange that we are using vitamin D analogs topically, but orally still many dermatologists still not prefer to use. I am using vitamin D orally also in a high dose. Then using uh, phototherapy like ultraviolet B, UVA and surgical treat treatment if possible. These are common treatments that we are using in our management. For the patients uh, which cannot be treated, we use camouflage or depigmentation and few other interventions. So basically I said that if it's a stable vitiligo, we go for surgical management. If it is a non-surgical, then we try to use more medical management. These are decapeptides that are easily av available. These are peptides, beta, fibroblast growth factors that are being used and they're commonly available now with the name of Melgain or MSG that are we are using and combining in our management. So I'll just skip and go fast from this. Now, coming to why we can use ozone in the management of vitiligo and you know ozone therapy increases microcirculation, we know it by now. It increases the level of nitric oxide and 2,3 DPG, which increases microcirculation. Ozone activates an NRF2 pathway, which is a master antioxidant. And vitiligo is known to be, there's an imbalance of, there's a dec uh, decreased amount of antioxidants in the skin that causes vitiligo. Ozone activates many antioxidants like catalases, superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase, and NDQ1s and all of other antioxidants. It improves wound healing and ability to, by inducing lymphocytes, fibroblast growth factors. So you know fibroblast growth factors are being given topically now by the name of Melgain. These are called decapeptides that are being used now and they help. And ozone also increases fibroblast growth factors. Then there are studies where we have, they have done the blood studies, especially in Russia, they found in all vitiligo patients, the level of malonic dialdehyde and 8-hydroxy deoxyguanosine goes up. Now these are the markers for inflammation or increased level of inflammation in the skin. So malonic acid level goes up. Now I want to share one Russian study that happened. Now this study was done by Grekinova and his team and they took 50 patients of vitiligo, advanced vitiligo, where along with the medications, they used ozone, and they, they used ozone saline. About, they used ozone saline and minor autohemotherapy, and up to, they give twice a week of ozone saline, 
and ozone minor autonomy therapy. 80% of their patient responded, that 40 out of 50 patients responded very well to this treatment by improving the level of pigmentation they were having. So what was the results of this study? That as a result of the treatment in uh, this study out of these 50 patients, the progression of vitiligo was stopped in about 80% of the patient, that 40 patients in form of diffuse or pointed repigmentation and decrease in the area of depigmented spots. So the repigmentation started. Now, a lot of people who are trying to use ozone in vitiligo don't get very good results. I've talked to many people and they said ozone is not really effective when we use for vitiligo. The reason is, try to understand, first, ozone will not work alone in vitiligo. You have to combine it in a protocol with various other things. Number second, why vitiligo is forming? One of the theory why vitiligo and depigmentation is form forming is there is increased level of hydrogen peroxide in the skin which is destroying the melanin pigment and the antioxidants are not working adequately to balance these, anti uh, these uh, hydrogen peroxide. Now, giving ozone topically in any form will increase your vitiligo, will not decrease your vitiligo. Understand this thing very clearly. If you give ozone like injections or by some form directly on the skin, what will happen? Ozone is going to form hydrogen peroxide. It has one of its mechanism. Now hydrogen peroxide will depigment the skin. It will not repigment. So that one common mistake what people are doing when they are trying to use ozone in management of vitiligo. You have to use ozone either as major autoimmune therapy or as a ozone saline because what you want is to increase their antioxidant levels increase NRF2 level. If you give it topically, you will increase vitiligo. Make this thing very clear because I talked to about 10 people, 20 people and everybody is saying ozone is one, play, one uh, vitiligo is one disease where ozone is not working. Why is it not working? Because you're not clear how it has to be used, number one. Number second, in vitiligo is a complicated disease so ozone alone may not work. Very clear about it. You have to combine it with other things. What other things I'll be telling you? So that's my thing, okay? So, and what they found after about two or three months, when the results, three months, they found the clinical picture co co correlated with normalization of oxidative stress because the indicators which was manifested by signif statistical significant decrease in the content of malonic acid. So we saw that malonic acid increases in vitiligo patient. They used ozone saline, but we can use ozone major autonomy therapy. That's your choice. The malonic acid level goes down and 8-hydroxy, uh, deoxy, 8-hydroxy, deoxy guanosine, they all, all come down. Similarly, level of antioxidant increase by 1.5 times by giving them ozone. So that is the reason when it helps. So what I use in my protocol is, I always give them high dose vitamin D3. I think all of you listened to the lectures of Dr. Renu that we, low dose of vitamin D is a very main factor for a lot of autoimmune diseases. So one of the major thing that I'm using, we are using high dose vitamin D. Sometime if their vitamin D is low, I give them arachidol injection and then put them on like 60,000 unit weekly or twice a week because uh, they won't take it daily, so that is why. I always put them pre and probiotics because you know by now, gut is linked with a lot of, you know, lot of their immune, autoimmune disorders. So I will be giving them VSL3, I'll be giving them inulin or something, or simply lactulose, you know lactulose? People use for constipation management. You know, lactulose by itself is a good probiotic. So lactulose, VSL3, something of this sort I'll be adding in my prescription to give them pre and probiotics. Low-dose naltrexone, how many of you are using low-dose naltrexone? So all of my patients who can afford and who can take, especially unstable vitiligo, I put them in low-dose naltrexone. Now the dose is important. You don't have to give it more than 3.5 milligram and it has to be given at night, and not in the morning. So common things with low-dose naltrexone, keep it like 3.5 to 4 milligram. Now, how do you prepare low-dose naltrexone? It's very easy. What I do in my practice is uh, Neltima or Neltrexone is 50 milligram. I take two of these tablets. I crush them. I put them in a normal saline, 100 ml. So 
100 milligram of naltrexone in 100 ml which makes like 1 ml of this saline equivalent to 1 milligram so when I want them to take 3.5 they can either take 3.5 ml and take it at the night or if they can't do it then we try to make it in the capsule form but it's better to give them in this liquid form and they can take 3.5 milligram out of it by 3.5 ml of this saline at night before sleeping now you know this LDN is also working at their uh, endocannabinoid system and also on increasing their endorphin levels something similar to what cannabis and other things are doing so this is something that you can add LDN to your treatment yeah it has to be kept because otherwise it get uh, you have to keep it in the freezer that's right uh, in your refrigeration fridge yes fridge now uh, in unstable vitiligo unfortunately we have to use steroids but how do I use steroid and how should we be using steroids number one don't give them daily they should not give them daily we give them in a pulse dose now what does pulse dose mean I give them beta methazone only on Saturday and Sunday not daily the normal dose what most dermatologists give is like 5 milligram Saturday and Sunday I see a lot of side effects with that also so what I give them is I give them like 3 milligram or 2 milligram of beta methazone Saturday Sunday it's a very low dose Saturday Sunday and always monitor their blood sugar HbA1c and lipid profile now what I see in most of the patients who are on these steroids even on, on a pulse steroid sometimes their blood sugar does not rise but their lipid profile goes totally out of order so always check their lipid profile and I give them in a very low dose now there is one wonderful miracle molecule nobody is using it it is the most strongest anti-aging drug that's still available for the human that is sirolimus or rapamycin how many of you are aware of rapamycin as amtor inhibitor which can prolong human life like no other medicine can do and nobody talks about it I'm very surprised no clinic no clinical meeting ever talks about mTOR inhibitors rapamycin is the biggest and strongest there are two things known till now that can prolong your human life what is the first thing can anybody tell me the strongest thing that can increase your lifespan one thing calorie restriction that right one thing that can you can take that I can increase my life by 10 years I'll just tell you is uh, start fasting or start calorie restriction the second thing that we know by now is that is the rapamycin or sterolimus strongest mTOR inhibitor and there is a dose and the way it has to be given you can't give rapamycin like that because many transplant patients take sterolimus and there are a lot of side effects now what is important the dose has to be very low number one number second the dose have to be given once a week or so the dose which is found effective in humans without any side effect is between three to five milligrams once a week there's a big study going on by dr. Caberlin on dogs the rapamycin is being given and what they're finding is the dogs are able to live three to four years more it's a very big number for the dogs much beyond their normal other dogs it prevents a lot of cardiac issues heart failures a lot of tumors and cancers in human the studies are going on there are a lot of trials going on so low dose and um, I am the only one to use rapamycin in my vitiligo patients so I talk to a lot of dermatologists nobody is using it so anyhow I give them rapamycin and my dose is like three to five milligram once a week I always put them on antioxidants and like vitamin C and that's a big again misconception I think all homeopathic doctors and Ayurvedic doctors are the one maybe allopathic doctors that vitamin C should not be given to vitiligo patient I give Mayer's protocol I give them intravenous vitamin C to my vitiligo patients and in fact I find them improving I'll show you my results so vitamin C does not increase vitiligo that's a very wrong concept I don't know from where it has come but in every system in Siddha in Ayurveda in um, homeopathy very don't eat anything which is sour or khatta because they say vitamin C will increase your vitiligo there is no evidence to it vitamin C helps with to improve it it does not decrease it does not make it worse so keep this as a message so I give them antioxidants green tea is very effective very good give them to drink a lot of green tea okay
topical tacrolimus is very effective, very good. It is much better than steroids, no side effects. If you're giving steroids topically, don't give them on face because otherwise there'll be a lot of problems. People don't know that topical steroid can have a lot of problems in long run. So tacrolimus is much fab fibroclast growth factor. Now these are the peptides that are available. How many people know about DECA peptides? Mel gain or MHG gain, easily available now. And anti-aging, we're talking about peptides now. So known side effect, absolutely safe, helps to increase the pigmentation, fibroclast growth factors. They are available now. Major, uh, major autohemotherapy and minor autohemotherapy, I give to my patients, but a lot of my patients are coming from far off places. I'm not from Delhi. They tried all dermatologists without any good results. So I give them once a month or twice a month, major, minor, and also mayor's protocol. I combine them because they are coming only once or twice to me uh, in a month to visit me. So we give them major and minor autohemotherapy. And I could see a lot of improvement in the results which other the, uh, you know, classical dermatologists were not able to get just by adding ozone to the whole treatment protocol. So I debated in many ways, you know, uh, now a lot of dermatologists started using vitamin D and antioxidant. Initially, they were, they were resistant to use even antioxidant. Now, one other thing that really makes my, diff my treatment very effective, which 90% people miss, even dermatologists miss, is they don't use phototherapy or narrowband UV light. I, in all my patients, I make it sure that they are getting exposure to narrowband UVB light, phototherapy. I'll be showing you if possible the videos. And if they're stable, Whitley goes, and then I go for melanocyte transplantation surgery. So these are the things which I put them on, and I'm very, very emphatic about, um, which my patients follow, which may not be other classical dermatologists may not be following. This is how we do the surgery, melanocyte transplantation. We use it in stable vitiligo, take a graft, it's a split thickness graft from the donor area. We put this graft in trypsin. We dermabrate the recipient area. We separate epidermis and dermis, centrifuge the graft. We get the melanin pellet. And these pigments are transferred on the recipient area. This is called melanocyte transplantation. This is something I do. I'm also combining it with fat grafting. Because why fat grafting? Because fat have got mesenchymal stem cells. Now mesenchymal stem cells are very strongly anti-inflammatory. I think uh, we'll have some videos, uh, Rina. First video. There are two, three videos, and they're not very long videos. So uh, I also have Eczema laser along with the narrow band. So Eczema laser, which one? Yeah. We also have Eczema lasers. So Eczema laser got very good results in management of vitiligo, especially small area of patches. So this is one special laser, Eczimer laser. And we can use narrowband UV phototherapy also for the vitiligo patients. Yeah. No, no, there are two, three videos. I wanted to show them. No, no. No, no, this is a top. Uh, I, I kept all the videos. Uh, no, no, I'll show them the small videos. And they're just two, two minutes or one, one minutes video. Is this melanocyte transplantation? Which video? So this is the surgical video, what we do. You can see we're giving local anesthesia. This is a melanocyte transplantation surgery. How we do this surgery? A small graft, which is a split thickness graft. Dermabrading the white patches. This is fat grafting. You can see the cannula and this is the fat. And the fat, I've got stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells. I'm injecting the fat below these white patches. As I said, they have got mesenchymal stem cells. We don't have to do all this in every case, only in very resistant cases, we go for this. Now, these are the melanin pigment. Can you see this? After trips in another thing. We separate the melanin pigments. On the white patches, we are putting this melanin pigments. And 
I got some videos where we are just showing you what kind of results we get with this. These are the results of our surgery. But this short video, what I wanted to show you, how this surgery is done. Okay, next, next. Just that's a small, small, small videos. So you see what is this procedure? What is this surgery? I'll be showing you, showing you phototherapy and eczema. Phototherapy is very important. When you, when you want to take a vitiligo patient, make sure you put them on phototherapy. So this is our team working with eczema laser and also the entire phototherapy. This is, this is eczema laser. I have not kept a video when I give major auto because all of you know major auto. So I am not showing that for the time. This is eczema laser. This is how eczema laser is given. Very fast results for repigmentation. There were all lot of white patches you can see and we are treating it with the eczema laser. This is the phototherapy chamber which I have got a full big phototherapy chamber. And you can see I have written here ozone therapy is another treatment which we give them to along with what is the treatment for what else they are getting. This is the chamber in which they go. There are two lights UVB, UVA. Twice a week I give them UVB, once a week I give them UVA. Now most dermatologists do not use UVA. Very few dermatologists do bring UVA. I am combining both UVA, ultraviolet B and ultraviolet A. I am combining both. So I see very fast results coming. Okay, this is phototherapy. Short. I'll show you some of the results, what we got. No, no. This is without surgery. This is ozone, phototherapy and medicines. The results. You can see extensive vitiligo given up by most dermatologists. And they're not more than three to four months. Now these kind of results people take years to get. surgery in this all by medicines all by phototherapy and ozone combination we are getting these results vitiligo is difficult with you have to combine modalities and sometimes some of the patients have coming from far off they have tried all treatments and they have not got results and then when we combine all these things we do get results to them this patient used to come very far off once a month just to take ozone from us and one thing more I like people can't buy big phototherapy chambers small and UVB lights are 8 to 10,000 I asked my patient to buy those lights online they are available easily available and they combine it with our treatment the small narrow band UV light so if you're giving ozone buy those small lamps you can keep it in your clinic or ask your patient to buy combine narrow band UV light with ozone you see amazing results these are our surgery results where we have done melanocyte transplantation surgeries especially for people who want to get married and they don't have much time around eyes and very very disfiguring patches you can see them these results are in a one or two months only sometimes very disfiguring on the face These are surgical results of a melanocyte transplantation. Thank you. Uh,
Sandeep. I invite Dr. Uh, Kartikeyan to give a token of appreciation to Dr. Sandeep. <laughs> 